to our weddings and proposals. Don't forget to go hand in hand. Uh, special here on DXB today. Now, we've got a guest co host in place, but joining us now, our next guest, the owner and the founder of Vivid Weddings here in the UAE. I say the UAE, but goes much further afield than that. An absolute pleasure to have Arun Bablani joining us. Uh, great to have you on board, as always. Super happy to be here, Tom. Um, you and I have spoken about this subject time and time again. You've been integral in the sort of growth of the, the, the wedding industry, if you like, here. Is Dubai, is the UAE, is, that, is it a bit of a hub for weddings now? Absolutely. It's always been a hub, but now we're seeing a, a tremendous demand uh, from, from global uh, citizens of the world. Mm. People used to usually travel within four to five hours to do a destination wedding, and we used to see on an average of a uh, thousand, two thousand weddings into the city, but since the pandemic, we're seeing a huge growth, anywhere from three thousand plus weddings into the city in a year. Now, I love hearing stories, crazy stories. I know everyone else would enjoy them too. Tell us some of the things that people would be surprised to hear about the weddings that you organize and host. I mean, weddings that we do are are truly unique. Uh, like the ladies were talking about earlier, it's trying to bring the bride and groom's vision to life. Uh, whether it's uh, how grand they want to be, how over the top they want to be, or if they want to keep it personal and small, uh, whether they would like celebrities, what their focus is, whether it's food, it's hospitality, it's the kind of destination, we do it all. So you could be like, hey, I really want Angelina Jolie at my wedding. And we'll get you Angelina Jolie at the wedding. Oh, wow. Uh, how much does that cost? A few million, probably. So how did, it, how did you get into that specific, specialized niche of what you're doing. You know, it's strange you ask. I, I, this was not, I was not meant to do weddings. I was a event manager and I've, I was doing it for the last maybe 20 years or so. And when I was in between jobs in 2011, uh, one of my friends reached out and he said, would you uh, help me plan my weddings? And at the time I had done conferences, I had done uh, club nights, I'd done fashion shows, I'd done brand activations. And I was like, you know, weddings are too personal and I can't do this. I don't understand weddings. It's too emotional. And he said, listen, I, I need a wedding planner. I can't find one. I'll help you and we'll do it together. And uh, somehow he convinced me and I did my first uh, wedding, which was a 1,600 people wedding across Whoa. three nights. It's like a Best. concert. It was like a concert. <laughs> and it's a small uh, one, just easy. <laughs> and, easy and did absolutely. it go well is the ultimate it, question. It went really well. And the feeling I got after the event was something that I, I cherished. And here we are 13 years later. <laughs> so. Arun, we've had the pleasure of working together on a wedding. How do you see the shift in the bride and groom's mindset post-pandemic? Well, Saiba, um, I, I, I usually categorize this in two uh, segments, right? So there is one, one uh, group of people that want to make it more personal, more customized, smaller weddings, make it more um, intimate and give people that the, the attention they deserve. Um, and make it as small as possible for the closest near and dear ones. And then there's the other group of people that, that I call them the YOLO group of people, right? Uh, so if they intended to do a 250 people wedding, now they're like, you know what, life's too short. Let's make it a 500 people affair. Let's get the whole hotel. Let's get the celebrity. Let's get that celebrity. So it's been, a, it's been a massive change. We're still putting our finger on it with time. But at this point, this is where it stands. I get this impression, Mukta, mm -hmm. from what you guys are saying and from what Arun's saying as well, that this is, that's, it's the land of, A, it's the land of opportunity, but it's the land of, well, anything is possible when it comes to a wedding. And it's excess. It's all about excess, I feel, you know, and luckily Dubai also provides a great uh, backdrop and accessibility from different parts of the world. So mm. people are finding it easier to come to Dubai and, uh, you know, enjoy it, and including the Emirates as well, mm. you know, not just Dubai specifically. Mm. Yeah. But I love how original the weddings are becoming. And did you have a sustainable wedding? Oh, absolutely. Tell us about that, because that's that sounds amazing. Uh, it was it was challenging, given given luxury and sustainability don't really go hand in hand. There's there's brands and companies trying to get those together, uh, but because weddings are essentially it's the most important day of your life, mm -hmm. but it's also the most wasteful day of your life, right? <laughs> whether it's the food, whether it's the decor, so putting together a sustainable wedding was something that. I, I had not imagined. Uh, luckily, it's a I, contradiction, I, really. It is, isn't <laughs> yes. it? Yes. Um, and luckily, I had the support from from Dubai Tourism, and uh, we met some people that talked talked us through with sustainability and uh, what went into it. They gave us some guide guidelines. 
Uh, and uh, six months later, we put together this wedding where everything was organically grown, uh, it was sustainable, it was locally sourced, it was a plastic-free, paper-free. Um, Butterfly-free. <laughs> Butterfly-free, no animals, no animal cruelty. Uh, we used um, we used all Tesla's electric cars for shuttling the guests wow. from the airport to the venue and back. Um, all the food was then donated after the wedding. Uh, it was quite challenging because it took us out of our comfort zone. Mm. And explaining that to your partners, your vendors, the hotel, took a little while, but we got through. Let's put you back in your comfort zone, if you can, because you've got the Dubai Wedding Symposium coming up a little later on this year. What can we expect? Uh, well, the Dubai Wedding Symposium is the inaugural conference being hosted by the Dubai government, the Tourism of Dubai. And we're trying to showcase Dubai to some of the top uh, destination wedding planners of the world. Uh, we're hosting them from the 16th to the 18th. And we will fly them down and showcase the best of what Dubai has in terms of Hotels will give them a beach experience, we'll give them a desert experience, we'll give them an indoor ballroom experience, and uh, that's the plan. Mukta and Saibo are invited? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to thought that was going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Aaron, thank you so much. Um, I'm really interested in coming down to the show. I'm not sure if I'm going to get married again, but I want to come and have a look and see what it's all about. He might, he might convince you otherwise. I think so, right? <laughs> By all means, you're very welcome. Thank you very much, Aaron. Cheers. Now, today's spotlight is on a wedding planning company in the city creating tailor-made weddings with a modern twist. This is Saz Events. My name is Sagar, I'm the business director for SAS Events Dubai and we are into weddings and corporate events and we do have our fabrication units where we create exhibition stands and luxury cosmetic stands for many French companies out here in UAE. The problem and the gap we are solving is by uploading vlogs on our Instagram page where it shows the ideal locations where the client can do their events uh, whether it be their weddings, birthday parties, or even their corporate events. The major milestone what we have achieved was last year crossing 1,000 plus clientels, uh, ranging from multinational corporations out here in Dubai or UAE to weddings and corporate events. Challenges what we face in our industry is from freelancers and unlicensed planners as they don't have their own offices or warehouses. So they offer the services at a very cheaper price and they also tend to risk the quality what they provide to the client. Dubai is ideal place because it offers world class infrastructure plus it has also got uh, it also connects the east and the west in one central hub. So this is the best place to do business. safety, economic stability, and it offers innovations and opportunities. From all the great work of SAS events to the greater work of Dina's Roundup. What you got for us? Ooh, I'm very excited about this one. So Dubai's Community Development Authority recently launched the Dubai Wedding Program with a mission to reduce the financial burden that a wedding can have on a young couple, as well as provide them with stability, a higher quality of life. Now the program has been launched in Dubai to encourage young Emiratis to get married by offering incentives to citizens, listen to this, to help reduce wedding costs, including marriage planning services, holding parties in modern halls, family counseling for newlyweds, as well as marriage planning, family management, and financial advice all for young couples. Is that not amazing? Can That's you amazing. imagine? Lane, why do you look so shocked? No, no, because I believe that was being done already, was it? It has been, it has been done, but I think they've been building on the program and it's been done differently in, in, in various Emirates, but Dubai is making it bigger and better as it always does. It always does. But I think for me specifically, the financial planning, all these things that you know, we get married often very young. I think there's so many things that we can't see in our future or plan or expect. You're also getting to know your partner, especially in these parts of the world. You often, you know, haven't been haven't been with your partner for that long. So I think there's getting that getting that, a little bit of assistance, that counseling, that financial advice. Definitely Isn't helps. it amazing? Definitely I think it's helps. great. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because yeah, you're right. It, it, it's just adding that more 
Whereas there could have been that sort of criticism that, that, that the big day, there is an element of responsibility. It's like, ah, you know what, to hell with the budget, let's just go with it, and et cetera, let's spend whatever it might be. To, to sort of go straight from the off and have that sort of more responsible approach, much like Arun was just talking yeah. there about sustainability and our commitments, et cetera. There's no, there's no reason why your big day shouldn't be different from any other day for the rest of your life. And I think it's a personal having... choice as well, right? Because a lot of people we know are um, opting to have smaller weddings but put the money towards an apartment or a home to kind of secure their future. So I think that's pretty you, credible as well. You know what I'd be interested to know is whether they do some marriage counseling or engagement counseling, I should say, <laughs> you know, before, before they get married because <laughs> yeah. to see whether they are compatible, to see if they, there's a lot of questions that I feel like couples should have asked before getting married. And can you imagine how helpful that would be if someone, a third party is sitting there you know, nothing to do with any of the families, nothing to do with any of the arrangements, who knows who, nothing, none of that. And talking them through all the financial, the complicated bits, the kids, the plans, career, whatever it is. Can you imagine how much, how many more successful marriages and Tom, you're laughing at me. Am I being I think it would scare a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, zero comment at the moment. From <laughs> it would probably scare you off on the, on the morning yeah. of, wouldn't it? Yeah. You take you on the responsibility. I'm not saying the morning of. I'm saying leading up to the wedding. Yeah. I think I think it's incredibly important. No, I agree. I read a lot of books leading up. I questioned my husband a lot. We had a lot of different discussions <laughs> before we got married and got married. And I hope other couples do. But yeah, hats off. The United Arab Emirates for investing in their citizens and uh, yeah, help, helping them out for the big day. Yeah. Talking about the big day, a uh, big show for us here this evening and still plenty to come. Let's have a little look at what's coming up. Louis sits down with some international authors at the Emirates Live Festival that took place this past weekend and it was awesome. Indeed it was. Plus, we find out emerging trends this wedding season with the team of The Card Co. And we've got Jay Abbo ready for a special performance. Don't you dare go anywhere.